The March 18th, 2024 meeting of the Bay City City Commission will come to order. The city clerk will give the invocation, which will be followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. And I'd like to um, ask everyone to do a moment of silence for Mayor Mary Ann Ackerman, who was passed away a couple weeks ago and was buried on Saturday. Um, she was a mayor of Frankenmuth, and also for was it Eric? I'm sorry, Eric Mays, um, the first ward commissioner in the city of Flint, who um, passed away actually at the same day as the mayor. So please rise. Will the clerk please call the roll? Commissioner Dockett. Here. Yeah. Rivet? Yes. Ernie? Yes. Brunner? Here. Hilliker? Here. Gerard? Present. Nijvecki? Here. Clements? Here. Morris? Here. Madam Mayor? Present. We have a quorum. The, ne the next item, um, I've been asked by the manager to do the employee of the year before we do the 23, 2023 year in review. On the bottom. So if I could have Brad, Peter, come up please, and Director Rowell. So be, before I start this, we have an employee of the month program here at the city. Um, employees nominate their fellow employees uh, for doing an outstanding job. We had um, we had Matt Meisel this year, or in 2023, Brad Peter, Adriana Maslowski, Nate Jones, Nick Bayer, and Matthew Van Sumeren. And Brad was named the employee of the year, so I am going to read um, the nomination form. Beale City Public Schools notified law enforcement in Isabella County about a teenage student and her boyfriend receiving hateful and harassing text messages. The harassment began in 2021 and the sender later discovered to be the girl's mother used software to disguise her telephone number and location. Corporal Peter, through his work with the FBI, was able to trace the messages to his mother to the mother, leading to her confessing to sending thousands of messages to her daughter, the daughter's boyfriend, and some of the daughter's friends. Still, the case, since the case has been made public, news organizations from the United States, including Good Morning America and Fox News, picked up on the story. Further, international news outlets from New Zealand Herald to the Jerusalem Post, as well as many others, have run the story Corp Corporal Peter played an important role in. Corporal Peter continuously strives to learn about and keep a step, step ahead of those who attempt cyber-related crimes. And for his efforts to that end, and his desire to see justice done not only in the city of Bay City, but also to other law enforcement agencies in need, he was nominated for Employee of the Month, and then he was selected for Employee of the Year. Um, congratulations. Here, I'll give you the... You want to say something about this? Feel like a broken record talking about uh, Officer Peter. We've worked together for 20 some odd years now, but Brad exemplifies what being a police officer is all about. Uh, we all refer to him as top cop. He doesn't really answer to Brad anymore. Um, <laughs> from this particular case that we were talking about that happened in, in Beale City, he's, he's actually going to be a movie star now too because Netflix contacted him about it. So um, we're going to add celebrity to the list here soon as well. but. Just an excellent police officer, uh, 
one that exemplifies, like I said, what being a police officer is all about, dedicated from day one till 20 some years into it, he's still dedicated as he was when he first started. So congratulations, couldn't be more deserving. Allison's going to come up and take a picture. We also have um, a couple gift certificates for you. Uh, the Double Tree does donate um, a gift certificate. We have another one here as well. I'll put it in your box here because Allison's going to take a picture. Thank you for all your service, Stu. We appreciate you. And the next order of business is presentations, proclamations, awards, and recognitions. And at this time, I believe we're going to do the review, 2023 review. While they're setting it up, this we used to do an annual meeting. Um, in the past couple years, we've switched to doing a year in review of everything that took place in 2023 from all the departments. Hello, and welcome to Bay City's 2023 Year in Review video, where we celebrate a year of growth and remarkable achievements across all our city departments. As we look back on this year's achievements, we're reminded of the collective effort and the spirit that make Bay City a wonderful place to live, work, and play. Join us as we reflect on these milestones and more. In 2023, our utility customer service team maintained Bay City's operational flow by issuing nearly 300,000 utility bills and around 30,000 tax bills. Our counter saw a steady stream of residents with over 76,000 payments made in person, while nearly as many chose the convenience of mail. The ease of technology allowed over 38,000 bank drafts and a whopping 98,000 online or phone payments. We're also thrilled to welcome the 80 new users who signed up to use our online utility portal who joined the growing community. Maintaining the backbone of our financial operations, our accounting team issued more than 7,800 paychecks to our diligent city workers and handled over 5,800 vendor payments. They also processed almost 800 utility refunds, ensuring fairness and accuracy throughout city exchanges. Our fiscal services team has earned us a nod of excellence for the 17th year in a row. The team earned a Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Financial Reporting by the Government Finance Officers Association. This recognition mirrors our dedication to accountability and fiscal integrity and the standard we uphold at Bay City. The Community Development Department of Bay City had a transformative year in 2023, launching initiatives and making strides towards enhancing the well-being of our community. In January, we kicked off the Emergency Housing Rehabilitation Fund powered by Community Development Block Grant Funds. This initiative marked a step forward in our commitment to supporting low to moderate income homeowners. Over the course of the year, we provided critical home repairs to 13 families, including furnace replacements, water line and sewer upgrades, and roof replacements. Our mission to improve Bay City's accessibility and safety saw progress with the replacement of sidewalks and the installation of ADA-compliant corner ramps. These improvements not only make our streets safer, but also more welcoming for everyone in our community. Water safety is a top priority, and in 2023, we advanced by replacing lead water lines for 68 addresses. This project, supported by matching funds from the ARPA initiative, is a step toward ensuring all Bay City residents have access to clean, safe water. Children in Bay City saw their playtimes enhanced with the installation of new playground equipment at Roosevelt, Defoe, and Nate Doan Parks. These revamped spaces are more than just playgrounds. They are vibrant community spaces where children can explore, learn, and grow. Bernie Street received attention in 2023, undergoing a full transformation that included reconstructing lead lines, water, and sewer system. This project is part of our effort to ensure a safe and healthy environment for our residents. In addition, CDBG funding also allowed community policing services to extend across the city, fostering a sense of unity and safety in every neighborhood. Finally, our department utilized funding to support the Good Samaritan Rescue Mission, covering three months of utility payments and providing much needed assistance to our neighbors facing housing challenges. 
We're grateful for the opportunities Community Development Block Grant funding has given us over the past year to be used for the betterment of our community. In the rental division, we've seen changes that reflect our evolving city. While the total number of registered buildings decreased, conversions to short-term rental properties brought a new dynamic. With a number of certified buildings and inspections in 2023, we're laying out the foundation for responsible and safe housing in Bay City. December marked a significant milestone, the approval of a new ordinance regulating short-term rental properties. With a focus on public health and community safety, this ordinance ensures Bay City retains its residential character while expanding lodging facilities for the benefit of all. In the vacant building division, our efforts to minimize vacant properties have been steadfast. The program success is evident in the low number of long-term vacancies and voluntary compliance. In 2023, a review with the Center for Community Progress affirmed the program's effectiveness, ensuring we are maintaining our neighborhoods to a high standard. From participating in National Night Out to neighborhood cleanup projects, we've been actively engaged with our community through collaboration. In May, we kicked off our Beautifying Bay City Cleanup Initiative, clearing areas throughout Bay City that need revitalization. We partnered with Bay County Habitat for Humanity and Michigan Community Service Commission in September with Operation We Care to provide critical residential repairs to the home of a Bay City veteran. Our largest cleanup in 2023 took place in October, where we transformed and revitalized a large area just south of Bernie Park. During this three-day event, individuals volunteered from all over to help beautify Bay City. Throughout 2023, Bay City's Code Enforcement Division opened over 3,000 cases. Remarkably, 3,097 of these cases were closed with compliance. This showcases an impressive success rate in addressing violations. The team conducted over 8,000 inspections and issued around 300 notice of violation tickets to ensure property upkeep and safety throughout Bay City. Only 103 cases required court scheduling, meaning less than 3.2% of total cases needed judicial involvement. This low number of cases reflects the effectiveness of the initial enforcement efforts taken. In 2023, our Planning and Zoning Division played a key role in guiding Bay City's development. We approached numerous projects, including plans for new constructions and modifications to existing plans, ensuring they align with the community's goals. The division successfully balanced historical preservation with modern growth. Our planning commission considered six total cases, which included four site plan reviews and nine additional administrative review cases. The Zoning Board of Appeals heard five total cases for variances, while the Historic District Commission received 38 applications. Alongside our Planning and Zoning Division is our Building Division, handling construction, demolition, floodplain, sign, soil erosion, and sedimentation permit reviews keeps this office busy throughout the year. In 2023, 2,022 total permits were completed and 3,756 inspections were finalized. The 2023 year had a continuous flow of permit applications. Residential permits covered new foundation repairs, demolition, additions, renovation, alterations, and new homes. The commercial side was very busy with multiple new commercial buildings. Projects of interest include the addition of Starbucks and the Uptown Riverfront development, to Merson starting a multi-year expansion that includes alterations, additions, and four new buildings. 2023 was a notable year for our economic development team in Bay City. Our team has been driving projects that not only continue to shape the community, but also the future of our city. With over $46 million in capital investments, 2023 has set the stage for growth and innovation. From the heart of our community to the waterfront, each project is a part of Bay City's growth. Some key projects in 2023 included Gujan Brothers, Inc., who embarked on a significant investment to modernize their operations and enhance manufacturing while creating new employment opportunities. H2O's invested to rehabilitate a functionally commercial building, which is now home to a new waterside restaurant. North Peak Brewing's investment into the rehabilitation of a functionally obsolete commercial building is still underway and furthermore, in 2023, Merson announced an expansion for over the next five years, which is expected to significantly increase their workforce and manufacturing operations and capabilities. Through ARPA funding, our team has been instrumental in supporting the local economy by assisting 51 small businesses with funding through the ARPA Small Business Program and 18 nonprofits with funding through the ARPA Nonprofit Program. In 2023, our assessing team worked hard to make sure the property values in Bay City were fair and accurate. 
Keeping Bay City affordable, we're proud to say that Bay City stood out as a beacon of affordability in the housing market. With a median sale price reaching $93,000, we've nearly doubled pre-pandemic figures while maintaining our rank as one of the most affordable cities in the nation. Bay City is ranked as the third most affordable small housing market according to a recent report by the National Association of Home Builders. This achievement reflects Bay City's adaptability in the face of rising mortgage rates, elevated construction costs, and limited inventory challenges across the state and the nation. Our city clerk's office may have not had any elections throughout 2023, but that doesn't mean they had a slow year. From block parties to festivals, our clerk's office was there. Well, not really, but they did process 37 special event permits in 2023. Need a passport? No problem. Our clerk's office has been your passport to the world, handling 378 applications with a smile. Our dedicated team also reviewed and processed 257 contracts and issued a total of 269 licenses to ensure everything runs smoothly and businesses continue to thrive in Bay City while protecting consumer safety. Now back to what they are most known for, elections. Due to an early presidential primary in February of 2024, our clerk's office has spent most of November and December making preparations for approximately 27,000 registered voters in Bay City. The incredible minds behind the numbers and why spending, our purchasing department had a busy 2023 year. The team processed and monitored a grand total of 268 purchase orders amounting to an impressive amount of over $6 million. They also facilitated 27 sealed bid processes, ensuring a fair and competitive procurement process. Contracts anyone? Our purchasing department secured 80 of them, including 23 citywide contracts and 21 professional service agreements. They also processed 16 responsible contractors in adherence to our ordinance. Turning surplus into success, the team sold 64 items at auction in 2023. 2023 wasn't just about numbers. It also marked a special milestone. Our purchasing department celebrated their 25th anniversary, the National Institute of Government Purchasing. On top of their daily activities related to benefits administration, time off, contracts, and more, the human resources team welcomed 64 new employees in 2023. Our active participation in local career fairs, along with conducting mock interviews at Bay City Central, Bay City Western, and Bay Aranac ISD, to strengthen our community connections and prepare future generations for the workforce. This year, we successfully negotiated four critical contracts with Teamsters 214, Supervisory and Non-Supervisory, Comb and Poem, ensuring fair and supportive working conditions for our city's valued employees. Next up, let's take a look at our Department of Public Works, who moved all divisions under one roof and into a new location in 2023. Where nature meets community and every park is a world of possibilities, Bay City's Park Division had a prominent year in 2023. The Kanzler Memorial Arboretum will soon be a blooming sanctuary for generations to come, which was all fueled by the community and crown funding. Through numerous grants from the Bay Area Community Foundation, Michigan Economic Development Corporation, Dow Chemical, and numerous community supporters, the Arboretum's Water Overlook Area will bring new features and improve universal access. Over at Liberty Harbor Marina, dreams set sail with the arrival of new docks. D-Dock received an upgrade in 2023 with new docking, power, water, fire suppression improvements, and more. This vision was made possible through funding from the Michigan Department of Natural Resources, enhancing Bay City's waterfront. Playtime got a whole lot better throughout Bay City in 2023. Our commitment to creating vibrant spaces for our younger community members led to the installation of new and repurposed playground equipment at Defoe Park on Hart Street, Nate Doan Park, and Roosevelt Park. At the forefront of ensuring Bay City's water safety and quality, our water metering and distribution team made strides in improving our infrastructure and services throughout 2023. Lead service line replacements have been a top priority for the past few years. We proudly replaced a total of 475 services in 2023, addressing and improving the health and safety of our community by ensuring clean water for homes and families. Service verifications are another key area of our work. With 121 verifications conducted this past year, these checks are essential in maintaining the integrity of our water distribution system. Challenges may arise, but so does our response. We face 20 main breaks, and our skilled team members work swiftly to resolve these events, keeping the water flowing seamlessly throughout all of Bay City. Fire hydrants, the silent protectors in the community. In 2023, we repaired 10, replaced 5, and ensured they stand ready in case of need. 
A total of almost 1,500 hydrants were flushed in the spring and winterized in the fall. Each hydrant also received a fresh coat of vibrant red paint. Our dedication to service goes beyond pipes and hydrants. Last year, we responded to roughly 4,500 service requests. Whether it was a service shutoff, addressing continuous use, managing meter leaks, or handling calls, we were there for you and will continue to be. Investing in our team is investing in our community. Seven of our employees either passed their first or advanced the required state water certifications, ensuring that our workforce is skilled and ready to meet the evolving needs of Bay City. Shaping the roads we travel and the community we call home, our streets division has been diligent in their maintenance of 450 lane miles of roadway. In 2023, our commitment to safety took a leap forward with the installation of new radar speed signs along Columbus Avenue. These signs serve as a reminder to all to slow down and navigate our streets responsibly and can be moved to areas where they are most needed when needed. But safety doesn't stop there. With the integration of state-of-the-art weather cameras, our streets team keeps a vigilant eye on changing conditions, ensuring our roads remain safe and accessible through sun, rain, wind, or snow. 2023 was quite the year for our fleet division. They serviced a remarkable number of equipment pieces, 375 to be exact. Our maintenance efforts went beyond just numbers. Each vehicle received attention, ensuring they were road ready and reliable. Our fleet technicians have over 145 combined years of automotive and heavy truck experience. Each technician holds at least 14 different certifications covering both auto and heavy truck applications. Regular checkups, preventative maintenance, and swift repairs, our fleet division has kept the wheels of Bay City turning smoothly all year. From fire engines, to mowers, to utility trucks, every vehicle plays a role throughout Bay City. In 2023, our engineering division advanced their journey to enhance the foundation of our city. From citywide sidewalk safety projects to low to moderate income CDBG sidewalk repairs, We've been investing in the safety and accessibility of our pedestrian pathways, ensuring every step is a secure one. Our commitment to smoother journeys extended to our roadways. With projects like the Columbus Avenue preventative maintenance and the reconstruction of Eddy, McClellan, and Bernie Streets, we paved the way for a more efficient transportation network. From Grant Street to Saginaw Street, Kosciusko Avenue to Winona and beyond, our roads underwent vital rehabilitation, ensuring they endure the test of time. But our time wasn't just focused on concrete and asphalt. We listened to the heartbeat of our city, gathering crucial input from residents on transportation safety and non-motorized travel. We also introduced a new GIS portal, revolutionizing access to city services and empowering residents with real-time information at their fingertips. In 2023, our sanitation team took Bay City's commitment to a cleaner, greener environment to new heights. Giving residents the right tools to make recycling easier and more efficient resulted in a huge change in 2023. Last January, we kicked off our bi-weekly recycling service with each Bay City resident getting a spacious new 96-gallon recycling cart. These carts were provided at no extra cost thanks to a generous grant funding from the Recycling Partnership and the Michigan Department of Environment, Great Lakes, and Energy. We hosted several impactful events at the Bay City Recycles Drop-Off Center. With the Earth Day event in the spring and the fall recycling event during early autumn, these events help community members clean up and clean out their homes in a manner that is more responsible to the environment than tossing them curbside. Inspiring the future generation of recyclers, our sanitation team visited schools, libraries, and community events to share the importance of recycling and how everyone's efforts contribute to the well-being of our community and our planet. New in 2023, Prairie Robotic Cameras were installed to monitor different contaminants that may have wound up in your recycling cart. This technology ensures that our recycling process is as efficient as possible, keeping non-recyclable materials out of the recycle stream while educating residents on what can and cannot be placed in the recycle carts. In 2023, Bay City Sewer Maintenance Team played a crucial role in keeping our city clean and functioning smoothly. The sewer collection system is utilized by everyone in Bay City, which requires constant cleaning and maintenance. Our skilled team embarked on a mission to maintain our sewer system's health, cleaning an impressive 45.45 miles of combined and sanitary sewer mains. Not forgetting the storm mains, where 2.4 miles received the same attention. Catch basins, the guardians against flooding, were not overlooked. Over 1,800 catch basins were cleaned and inspected, ensuring rainwater freely flow from our streets. 
Maintenance is only half of their story. The division tackled 80 storm sewer system repairs and made 63 crucial improvements to the sanitary and combined systems, ensuring reliability and preventing issues before they emerge. Embracing technology, we rehabilitated our sewers using lining techniques, adding years to their lifespan without the need for complete replacement. Through teamwork, innovation, and relentless dedication, Bay City Sewer Maintenance Division ensures our city remains a wonderful place to live, work, and play. Welcome to Bay City's Wastewater Treatment Plant, a key player in keeping Bay City clean and safe. Throughout 2023, our dedicated team has taken strides to maintain and improve our city's water quality. Thanks to these efforts, Bay City's Wastewater Treatment Plant has successfully treated 3 billion gallons of water and managed thousands of tons of waste. 2023 also marked a period of major upgrades, including the replacement of crucial equipment like retention basin number two's dewatering screw pumps, a vital step in treating Bay City's wastewater before it is delivered to the Saginaw River. Production of a new modern emergency generator has armed our facility against power outages, ensuring uninterrupted operations and the continuous safety of our water. Through hard work and innovation and community support, Bay City's wastewater treatment plant is setting a standard for sustainable living Together, we're working towards a brighter, cleaner future for Bay City. In the busy heart of Bay City, Bay City Electric Light and Power has been illuminating lives and bringing energy and excitement to our community in more ways than one. From engaging events like Customer Appreciation Day to Sustainability Bingo, we've not only powered homes, but also empowered our community members to live more sustainably. When it comes to power outages, we know they can be more than just inconvenient. That's why our team is dedicated to not only quickly resolving these issues, but also working to prevent them in the first place. Our system's availability rate of 99.9886% shows that our proactive approach means we're always ready to restore service swiftly and safely. Our vegetation management team's efforts to plant new trees along our city streets have not only improved our landscape, but also played a crucial role in enhancing our local environment. This initiative demonstrates our dedication to creating a greener, more vibrant Bay City. And our environmental efforts did not go unnoticed. This year, Bay City Electric Light and Power was awarded a bronze designation in the Michigan Green Communities Challenge for our achievements in recycling, community engagement, renewable energy, and energy efficiency. On the national level, we received the diamond designation from the American Public Power Association celebrating our commitment to reliability environmental leadership. Behind the scenes, our technical teams were hard at work ensuring our city stays brightly lit and reliable. In 2023, we embarked on a comprehensive 10-year overhaul of four generators. Each engine was dismantled and inspected with all damaged or worn parts being replaced. This maintenance not only ensures our readiness to meet emergency energy level needs, but also positions us to assist the national grid during times of high energy demand or price surges. 2023 was a standout year for our public safety department, showcasing our commitment to safety and community engagement. Community policing continued their rhythm with multiple events like Cone with a Cop, Lemonade with Law Enforcement, and Coffee with a Cop, which brought our officers and community members together. Initiatives like National Night Out, Presence in Patrol Cars, and Shop with a Hero highlighted the festive spirit in Bay City while the Youth Leadership Academy shone a light on our investment in the next generation's potential. Our dedication to service extends beyond the call of duty. Our team also made a splash by raising nearly $25,000 for the Polar Plunge and Special Olympics. Continuing our effort to protect and serve our community, the Bay City Department of Public Safety continues to incorporate new ways to perform various jobs. The introduction of new drone team marks a leap forward in our department's capabilities, providing an eye in the sky for surveillance, search and rescue, and disaster response. Our Fire Academy hosted its third successful year, training recruits from across the region and maintaining its reputation as a premier learning facility. Our firefighters also stayed sharp with specialized trainings, including the annual ICE training, ensuring readiness for any scenario. A significant stride in our approach to public safety has been the formation of the Quick Response Team. Quick Response Team members strive to combat drug addiction within our community. This past year, they reached out to 97 homes, offering support and resources to those battling addictions with seven people accepting coaching. With incredible behind the scenes work, Our information technology team ensures our city's tech gears keep running smoothly. 
With nearly 2,600 service requests resolved in 2023 alone, our IT department officially handles each challenge brought their way, keeping our systems operating efficiently. As we conclude our journey through Bay City's 2023 year in review, we're left with a sense of pride and optimism for the future. To every department, division, and employee that has contributed to our city's success this year, thank you. Your hard work and dedication in Bay City has been the driving force behind our progress. Thank you for being a part of our city's journey. Here's to a year of progress and even greater things to come in 2024. The next order of business is the adoption of the agenda. Do any members of the commission wish to add an item? Seeing no one, is there a motion to adopt the agenda? Commissioner Daca. Thank you. Move to adopt the consent agenda. Is there a second? Commissioner Morris? Second. Will the clerk please call the roll on the adoption of the agenda? Commissioner Rivett? Yes. Bernie? Yes. Brunner? Yes. Hilliker? Yes. Gerard? Yes. Pinchbecki? Yes. Clements? Yes. Morris? Yes. Docket? Yes. Nine yes. The agenda is adopted. The next order of our business is the consent agenda. Do any members wish to have a change? Commissioner Gerard? Just a resolution nine. Resolution nine. Sorry, and that's a resolution regarding the MDOT contract for the reconstruction of Lafayette Bridge. Okay. That'll be on the regular agenda. Anyone else? Commissioner Rivett? Uh, item 13, just for clarification, there was no rationale or reason given for it, so I just was looking for clarification. All right, 13 will be on the regular agenda. Anyone else? Seeing no other changes, the next order of business calls for public input on the consent agenda. This is the opportunity for citizens to remove an item from consent for consideration on the regular agenda. If anyone in the audience wishes to make a change to the agenda, please come to the microphone, sign the registration sheet, state your name and address for the record, and the item you wish to have considered on the regular agenda. Reports of officers, oh, sorry, Alex DeWitt, 39 South Theory. Reports for officers five regarding the master plan. That's it tonight. Thank you. Anyone else? Is there a motion on the consent agenda? Commissioner Hilliker? Move to approve. Is there a second? Commissioner Brunner. Second. Will the clerk please call the roll on the adoption of the consent agenda? Commissioner Bernie? Yes. Brunner? Yes. Hilliker? Yes. Gerard? Yes. Nijvecki? Yes. Clements? Yes. Morris? Yes. Dockett? Yes. Rivet? Yes. Nine yes. It has been approved. Um, the next order is remarks of the mayor and commission. Um, I would like to make a few remarks. And um, number one is to thank the three commissioners. And the fourth commissioner was in the parade too, w walking with his wife. And and Rochelle, I'm sorry, Hilliker. So it was nice to see the guys carrying the sign. I unfortunately couldn't make it, but I watched it on TV. It was a really great parade. And so thanks to you all for um, marching yesterday. Also, a couple weeks ago, I was in the building. Um, I performed a wedding here in the chamber, and it was a very loud wedding after they left the chamber. Um, I was in my office with the door closed, and they had went up to the fourth floor for pictures, and it was like they were right in my office with me. So I know that there are staff who were probably wondering what was going on. So I apologize for any disruptions that you all had to um, deal with. And I think that's pretty much it. Nice to know that Commissioner Dackett and Commissioner Gerard, do you want to talk to? Okay. All right, let me, all right, Commissioner Dackett, I think your hand was up first. 
Thank you. <clears throat> um, I have two things. Uh, first one, it's starting to get warmer. I have residents on Water Street that are um, letting me know that the drag racing has started for the season. And I know that there are uh, speed bumps on the way. Just wondering if there's a timeline on that through the chair to the city manager. Thank you. Uh, I believe it was the first week of May in that area, if I recall. Okay. I know we got to get past the snow. There's concerns about the snow plows and stuff. Yes, correct. First week of May is the plan. Yes. Okay. The second thing, um, yesterday we walked in the parade and there were a couple houses that are a couple properties I noticed coming down center um, that I know were in various stages of development at one point, but they died uh, due to some parking restrictions. Um, I haven't spent enough time with the master plan to see if parking minimums have been adjusted as a part of that, but um, is that something that's on the horizon? Because I'd, I'd like to see all of center nice. Uh, I, think, I think we'd like to see all of the whole city nice, but um, center was where I happened to be walking yesterday. So I'm looking at Terry and Tony. Um, we will do a presentation to you, so I'm sure that'll come up during that, but I don't know, do you want to answer from them right now? No, it's fine, I'll get it later. Thank you. Okay, all right. That's all I have, thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Gerard? Okay, Commissioner Verney. Um, first, I'd like to address our sergeant at arms. Um, we talked, you know, I always have to address you because I want to make sure that um, I'm saying the proper things and I would like to talk and not be shut off and I have some questions that I'd like to ask you. So is it okay that I, um, if I talk, if, as long as I'm a good girl, is it okay if I ask you some questions, please? You can, it's your time, say whatever you want. I'm not gonna guarantee I'm gonna answer you. Okay. Um, as I've been saying, I've been wondering what's going on with the State Theater. Um, so it came to my attention, a uh, question I wanted to ask you, are you affiliated with um, Mike Bacicalupo, um with the State Theater when it came to you in this NPFL? Um, Commissioner Bruni, he doesn't really have to answer that question, but. Um, another question, um, it says that you signed a contract. Um, you said that um, the city of Bay City was not involved with this last time we talked. You said that they were not involved with what was going on with Mike Bacigalupo, that he was not um, this thing with the State Theater had nothing to do with the city. Um, it says right here, Clement signed a contract, and you said you were a hesitant, but um, you signed it under Mike Bachelupo's, um advice. So um, what I'm saying here, being a commissioner, were you on the behalf of the city, or were you, was this um, you in the in what is it um, the fishing tournament is this your job was this you doing this on your own because solicitation being a commissioner and using your commissioner status is against the rules so which is it are you um, were you using this as the city of Bay City under a contract that you signed um, with the state theater with Mike Bacigalupo, or is this something you are doing on your own and making the funds on your own? Or Once again, Commissioner. Um, okay, thank you. You all set? Yes, I am. Okay, thanks. Commissioner Gerard. Thank you very much, Mayor. Um, just a couple things. I want to say congrats to all the racers out there. I brought, if you didn't see the race medals, I ran both the 8K and the 5K race. And uh, Where's your costume at? I did not wear my dino sword. It's my T-Rex costume. I wore it during the 5K race, and I'll explain why. It was <clears throat> my uh, granddaughter, uh, who just turned three years old. Uh, she experiences autism. And so we we're kind of raising awareness for autism, and she needs a specialized bed. And 
raising awareness to help support that. So that's why I wore the dinosaur costume during the race, if you folks out there were wondering. It was a good time, so thank you for all those that uh, supported that race and put it together. Also, the Parade Association, it's a year-round event. I mean, they're planning all year round, so kudos to those folks. Um, yeah, I, I look forward to it every year, and I know uh, a lot of our community uh, residents look forward to that. And it, the snow held off a day, so that was great. Um, I also want to bring up the Infrastructure Subcommittee Group is going to be meeting March 25th. It's at 3.30, mark, mark it down, uh, and we're just going to talk about plans going forward because we all know, we hear it frequently, uh, residential neighborhood streets um, and how we deal with those and other infrastructure issues uh, high on the priority list for our residents. So, um, so that'll be a topic on the 25th. Uh, Lafayette Bridge update briefly. Uh, last Tuesday, there was a, a coordinated me meeting. Uh, I, I want to thank the Senator uh, McDonald Rivets office for helping uh, put that together with MDOT representatives. Um, did some clarification on some start dates, potentially. They have not fully uh, let the project out because of their some permit things. They had to get squared away. Um, the soonest, though, once that's announced, uh, is August 6th on full closure. Uh, but there's no guarantee that is the date. Uh, but they have, uh, once it's announced, there's a 39-month window from the time uh, that's awarded to uh, complete the project. So they have a range. But the closure, the maximum time that the bridge can be closed is 30 months. So just... Uh, two, it is two and a half years, so um, hopefully, however, that's part of the reason of that meeting is to kind of coordinate and uh, look to support businesses that are going to be impacted. It's a, uh, definitely a long time for those folks, and uh, hopefully something can be figured out. There was other representation from uh, Bay Future, and uh, the, the small business folks um, couldn't be there, but uh, working on some kind of plan. So um, that's all I have at this moment. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Seeing no one, um, this is now the manager's time to a report. Um, yep, I just have a couple things. I do want to thank um, Emily Landry, who does our marketing for the city, for the video that was just played, and also to Allison Riffle for assisting. Um, we started budget processes today um, at City Hall with all of our departments, so that's going to be probably a three or four week process. And then uh, last week, uh, Commissioner Gerard was also present. We had the Optimus Youth Appreciation Awards um, at the Doubletree, and it's all about um, recognizing our young heroes that are nominated by teachers in the school. So it was a really good event, um, showing some of the good things that our students are doing in our community. All set. The next order of a business calls for public input. Under the rules of the City Commission, each speaker will be allowed five minutes to speak. Commissioner Clements will serve as timekeeper. This is the opportunity for citizens to address the commission regarding any agenda item or any other matter. If anyone wishes to address the commission, please come forward, sign the registration sheet, and state your name and address for the record. Uh, Terry Valligan with the Bay City Bridge Partners, uh, 300 Center Avenue, Suite 101. I have a quick couple of announcements for uh, public notification. Uh, Bay City Bridge Partners will be sending out uh, pay-by-mail notifications soon. These will go to registered owners of vehicles that have traveled over Liberty Bridge without a transponder. Please note that we have some opportunities both for uh, Bay City residents and non-residents who receive a pay-by-mail invoice. For City of Bay City residents, Bay City Bridge Partners will waive your total invoice one time if you create a Bay, uh, BC Pass account for future travel over our bridges by the due date noted on your invoice. This offer is only valid for transaction 
on your first invoice, so pay attention to the invoice date. For non-residents, Bay City Bridge Partners will adjust your pay-by-mail toll transactions to the lower BC pass rate based on your vehicle's class if you create a BC pass account for future travelers over our bridges. Offer valid only uh, for transactions on your first invoice and payment in full for the adjusted balances required. Either way, we're here to help. Bay City Bridge Partners is here to help. Customers can call 855-648-4330 or visit 300 Center Avenue, Suite 101 to open an account and redeem this offer. If someone receives a pay-by-mail invoice and doesn't believe they should have, please instruct them to reach out to us at our uh, phone number I provided or at the address of 300 Center Avenue, Suite 101. We have worked with several customers who are registered owners of a vehicle that was unknowingly driven across our bridges by another family member. And people don't have to wait to get this corrected. If they know they've crossed over the bridge and want to uh, know the charges they have incurred, they could come in or call us. We want the community to know we're here to help. This is also new right now, and we've provided a lot of information over the past several months, several quarters. We know it's a lot of information to take in. Please call or come in if you have any questions or concerns. Please remember that Bay City, or the City of Bay City residents driving a Class 1 passenger vehicle must have a transponder to take advantage of free tolling on Liberty Bridge until 2028 and free tolling on Independence Bridge until 2030. They are not required to have a, a, a payment method on file, but we recommend it. If they don't provide a payment method and drive a Class 2 vehicle, they will pay the higher pay-by-mail rate. So this is great insurance to have that card on file, so they pay, pay the lower rate. Finally, a couple quick uh, words about the temporary closure on Independence Bridge. This current temporary closure is to fix some unexpected beam work in the bascule section and to do some of the commissioning work. We truly hate to do these closures, but we have to make sure both the workers and drivers are safe during this work. This has to be done before the start of the shipping season so we can open and close the bridge. And we must be ready to open and close the Baskill bridges for shipping seasons by mid-April. My last comment, Bay City Bridge Partners, with all the work going on, has invested over $150 million in Liberty and Independence Bridges starting in 2022 through 2024. We are target, on target to open Independence Bridge at the end of 2024. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Alex, we're at 13 and so theory. Uh, before I begin with what I pulled from the agenda, I want to um, thank the workers who came into my house. I was the last house on my block with an unimpeded lead line, which means it was still safe, but it was needed to be replaced. I got that done last week. They're really helpful. They, um, I was able to stay home for a little bit that day to kind of see the process work. It's really um, interesting to see. And I'm glad that's finally done. And now for the item I pulled from the agenda about the master plan. Uh, this is de designed to be Bay City proper. Like this is, this is designed as the city of Bay City. Yet in it are photos from things that are not city of Bay City and not things that are examples, actual items, like a high school athlete from a non-Bay City, uh, city of Bay City high school or showing a marching band from an out-of-county high school. It's supposed to be designed for a city of Bay City first. That's the goal of this. It's designed to be a professional overview. Yet some of them look like, some of the photos like, selected look like pixel art images, as in uh, page four and eight in chapter three and page eight in chapter five. It's also designed to be up to date. Yet a photo has the old power towers across the river. Those were removed almost a decade ago. Cats Meow and Sweet Boutique on Washington are still showing this. That was almost a decade ago. Or how about the light at Center at Washington, the first light to change? That is also visible. 
On page eight in chapter one, the gateways, the picture taken there shows that the, um, the panhandler that has been on the Monroe Township side of the city for over a decade is in it. Professionals trying to do a public relations publication would probably not want that there. It is a part of our area, but having that visible is not usually something that's in those packets. On page eight in chapter two, it shows what is an example of what is supposed to be a duplex from another location. But those are not, um, not duplexes. They are single family homes without driveways. This map, there are maps in the master plan that are almost impossible to see. See page nine of chapter two, for example, or page three in chapter 24, excuse me, chapter um, four. One of the segments on the land use chapter is to protect the riverfront, but only talks about developed uptown, downtown, and Vets Park areas. These are anything outside that zone. There's a lot of industrial, there's a lot of other residential, and there's some parks there that are left out. In chapter three, the study for housing is used in the 2016 housing study, and that, due to COVID and almost a decade since that housing study, is already outdated and flawed. For example, there is a part that really gets under my skin, the targeted investment areas. Essentially, if you're outside of downtown, uptown, Midland Street, or Columbus Avenue, they're calling you to bend the knee and have those areas prioritized. South End is excluded, Banks area is excluded. That is on page six in chapter three. So it's telling investors or uh, people looking at this, we don't want those parts of town. That's what it looks like. On page 10 in chapter three, it calls for more accessible housing in Bay City, especially for our senior population. There's nothing wrong with that, but the areas that are highlighted for more development are in the historical district on the east side. Houses that will never meet those standards if we want to keep those houses standing. Something else I want to note, on page 13 in chapter three, is a pie chart showing um, housing mix for different generations. Millennials are showing that they want townhomes almost as much as single family homes. But I think a key insight is missing there. Townhomes are liked by my generation mostly because of the lower average cost nationally. In Bay City, townhomes cost more than the average single family house. I think rehabbing the older houses, spending money in that area, would help bring people who want single family housing into Bay City where they can have that independence. Whereas in other cities, like in Portland, Oregon, townhouse is $400,000. Single family homes start about 900000 I think that's just something that's missing from the packet. Page five, in chapter five, page 12, it's using flood maps that are outdated per this meeting we have right now. New flood maps are coming in. There's a public hearing. We're having it in about five minutes probably. And the coordination between city and the group that created this appears to be missing. In chapter seven, it shows state theater having a primary effect of entertainment. Even though this was created per the minutes in the back of the packet to be created in January when things were already known to be going south. I think that needs to just be adjusted to be updated with current information. There seems to be a disconnect uh, between focusing on the positive downtown being along the river and helping drawing people and helping being a cool breeze compared to chapter seven and in page 14 on chapter seven, saying that higher temperatures in downtown areas um, compared to outer neighborhoods. That's a contradiction. You can't have a higher temperature downtown while also having a cooler temperature downtown next to the river. Finally, the maps in the back of the packet aren't much better than the inset map that I already noted, and they are split between pages. Formatting matters in this. This master plan, in my opinion, is at best half-baked. If we want to put our best foot forward, this needs to be cleaned up. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to address the commission at this time? Hello. I'm not a ghost. Marie Kurzer, um, haven't been here in a while, and I need to ask a question. I have some information. Would it be appropriate to give the clerk and the, the commission, or is it too late? Or? Sorry. While Jamie's doing their um, question, would it be appropriate in this um, setting to provide a copy for the Human Services Committee, or would I have to do that separate? Probably separately. Okay. All right. Never mind. Um, that microphone. The clerk will make sure they, the manager will make sure that they get it. Okay. Oh, thank you, Dana. Did you say the clerk or the manager? Okay, thanks. Okay, um, 
I was asked actually some time ago to present this to the commission just to bring some awareness to um, how this is set up, this new playground. It's, I don't know, it's wonderful. It's um, the playground at the marina in Vets Park. And the first page tells you all the different parking spots available and um, how many are um, reserved, and, but they're all for the marina. So the new playground that is a wonderful playground for handicapped children, if you wanna go there with your children or your grandchildren, you have to park over at the Vietnam Veteran Helicopter Memorial, which there's a young lady who has a four-year-old child. She has muscular or multiple sclerosis. It's impossible for her to do that. We have grandparents who are of older age who cannot do that. Um, Again, I think it's a wonderful thing, but then when you also think of the fact that we have a nice pavilion down there that people use, and there's family gatherings, and I've heard from multiple people that some older family members cannot attend what event is going on because they can't get to it. They can't park close enough to it, and there's no sidewalk unless you go all the way around I call it the old warming building. Some people probably don't even know what that is, but the, the building down at Veterans Park, um, closest to the um, boat ramp, they have to go around that sidewalk and then come back around, which is almost impossible, and there's no way they can cross that bumpy, grassy area to get to the pavilion. I mean, they, yeah, so it's just not possible. So there's pictures that are, um, in color, there's uh, different things for the commission and, and the mayor and the clerk and, and manager to review, and the Human Services Committee, and the reason I involve them is because of the type of population that it involves. Um, it's very um, disheartening to think that we have something so beautiful that people can't get to. The other thing is um, there's even, there's even um, parking places, I believe, for um, transient boaters, which for transient boaters, we have to have so many slips because they come in from another area. But I don't really see why there would be a need for a parking spot for them um, in that area. Um, I've had people tell me that they go there, they're threatened that they're going to get a ticket, they might get towed away, they have a security guard, they have the dumpster. Um, I know that they pay a, a fair amount of money to have a slip at the marina. All that information is included as well, which I'm sure you all already know, um, and all the amenities that they're afforded for it. Another thing is the special events. When there's a special event, um, say, it's fenced off, which makes sense. They have to do that. But the way this, pro, uh, this playground is set up, if it was um, in a way that they would put the fence on the east side of it instead of putting it on the west side so that it would still be accessible, so that they could still come in and get to it, um, it doesn't seem fair that they should fence it off all the way around um, in that event. The, um, there's a lot of people who are concerned about this, a lot of people who are appreciative of it, and if it could be something that could be looked into, perhaps, I know we don't wanna get rid of any more green space than we already have, but there are cars who are allowed to, par allowed to park on the west side of the marina in the grassy area between um, John F. K. Drive and the marina, if there could even be something that could be put there so that there could be more marina parking that way and allow for more playground parking and pavilion parking and even more handicap parking. Um, you'll see these different rows and how they're marked and perhaps some of you can take a ride down there and see it for yourself. Um, Commissioner Nijvitsky. I know I slaughtered it. Um, you're my commissioner that's in your ward, um, and I'm sure that you would probably be um, interested in checking that out for your constituents and the city as a whole. So um, I guess that's, they have a dumpster. We all have to use trash containers and get them dumped. Businesses can't use dumpsters anymore or um, private organizations. Um, that takes up a whole parking space 
So is there an area where they could have access to, and maybe they would be too full, but maybe they could be dumped, you know. They have, what, Thursdays and Fridays on the west side, maybe part of Wednesday, but maybe they could dump them on those two days, I don't know. So that's just um, what I wanted to present. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Is there anyone else who might, would like to address the commission at this time? See no one come forth. We are back and I must get up and do um hearing. This is the opportunity for citizens to address the commission regarding um, three different public hearings that we have tonight. The first one is the ordinance amendment to the Code of Ordinance, Chapter 62. Floods, section 62-1 through 6258, regarding updated flood plan ma maps. The next one is establishment of a neighborhood enterprise zone at Iron Bridge at Wheeler Landing Condominiums. And the third- Madam Mayor, Madam Mayor can you hold on one moment? If the commissioners from the second and third ward would like to continue their conversation, can you please take it out to the hall? because I can't even hear what she's saying with you guys having a conversation, okay? Thank you. Thank you. And the third one is the establishment of a neighborhood enterprise zone founded by Campbell Street, Elizabeth Street, Fitzgerald Street, and McEwen Street. Is there a motion to allow the public hearing? Commissioner Dockett. Thank you. Move to allow for public Public hearings one, two, and three. Thank you. Is there a second? Commissioner Brunner? Second. Thank you. If anyone wishes to address the commission regarding the public hearing number one, please come forward, state, sign the registration sheet, and state your name and address for the record. Seeing no one come forth, um, same rules apply for establishment of a neighborhood enterprise zone and seeing no one the third same rules apply establish it of a neighborhood enterprise zone founded by Campbell Elizabeth Fitzgerald and McEwen Street since no one has come forth we'll go into the next order of business madam clerk will you read the next order Special order, item one, city manager recommending ordinance amendment of the code of ordinances, chapter 62 floods, chapter 60, or I'm sorry, sections 62.1 through 62.58 regarding updated floodplain maps, recommendation approved. Is there a motion? Commissioner Gerard. Move to approve special order number one. Is there any discussion? I'm sorry, I need a second. Commissioner Bruner? Second. And now is there any discussion? Will the clerk call the roll, please? Commissioner Brunner? Yes. Hilliker? Yes. Gerard? Yes. Nijvecki? Yes. Clements? Yes. Morris? Yes. Jacket? Yes. Rivet? Yes. Bernie? Yes. Nine yes. The motion is approved. The next item. Regular agenda item one, city manager recommending contract with Shaw Contracting, Bay City, in the amount of $77,955 for Veterans Memorial Park Path Repairs. Recommendation approved. Is there a motion? Commissioner Hilliker? Move to approve. Is there a second? Commissioner Dockett? Thank you, second. Is there any discussion? Commissioner Nizvitsky. Thank you. I will need to abstain for this, from this vote because of my involvement with the Riverwalk and Rail Trail Committee. However, um, if I felt it prudent to cast a vote this evening, I would definitely vote yes because this is a stretch in need of much repair um, for both aesthetics and safety purposes. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Seeing no one else, would the clerk please call the roll? 
Commissioner Hilliker. Yes. Gerard. Yes. Nijvecki. Epstein. Clements. Yes. Morris. Yes. Dockett. Yes. Rivet. Yes. Bernie. Yes. Brunner. Yes. Eight yes. The motion is approved. The next item, please. Reports of officers, item five, city manager recommending the release of this Bay City master plan to begin a 63 day review period. Is there Commissioner Gerard? Move to approve. Is there a second? Commissioner Dockett? Thank you, second. Any discussion, Commissioner Gerard? Thank you, the chair of the city manager. Could, um, we could have staff just come up and talk about how the plan was developed, the time frame, who exactly reviewed this, and just so everybody's aware. Yep, absolutely. Terry can come up and go through the process. Good evening. The Bay City Planning Commission actually began the review of the master plan in 2000. 22 uh, we got started on it then we were also doing some work through the planning office on uh, the zoning ordinance we did take uh, the months of 2023 and had the uh, planning commission agenda for most of each of the meetings we spent time reviewing the master plan um, there were presentations that I might have put together to kind of have different documents that were associated with the comments or whatever we were reviewing that particular night. So as we went through the different chapters, I would try to have information that was applicable to you know that discussion. Uh, all the meetings of the Planning Commission are public meetings, so at any point somebody could have attended the meeting and the Planning Commission over the course of that time uh, had decided to do a review of the master plan or an update, I should say, of the master plan. So then uh, each of those meetings had spent time doing so, and where we're at today would be the release of the master plan, which would make the master plan available for public comment. So during that 63-day period, comments such as what we heard tonight would be accepted and then staff would incorporate uh, any of those comments uh, as necessary into the process or into the document. And then sometime in May, it would be uh, after the 63 day period, it would come back to the planning commission. They are required by the Michigan Planning Act to hold the public hearing. So we'll have another public hearing uh, either in that May or June time period. Still have the floor. Okay, thank you. And so uh, once that's gone through the planning commission, does it come back to us again for final approval then? Um, uh, when we did the 2017 plan, we're staying consistent with what we did there, where once the city commission released it, then it comes back to the planning commission and the planning commission approved it. Okay, so it's uh, the residents public can go to those meetings then and kind of advocate for like we heard tonight for those kind of changes and uh, to that plan. Is that yes, and within the next few days here, the city web page under the planning and zoning department is going to have some updated information referring to a survey that we expect to put out for about 30 days during this 63 day comment period. So we'll have a survey and ask people to participate in the survey also. Now, did we have uh, assistance from outside uh, agencies with the development of that? I know originally in 2017, when we did the, the major overhaul, we did, did, did they continue on with some support or was it mostly staff? Uh, we did this review in house. Um, so it is the desire of the planning commission that when the next five year plan uh, would be initiated, it would be their hope to consult or have a consultant engaged and then do a series of public meetings and develop a, a whole new master plan. 
This is a new master plan. We're calling it Master Plan 2024, but it does build off of obviously that 2017 plan, and that's what the Planning Commission, you know, spent the majority of the time fleshing some of that out. Okay, thank you. That's all the questions I have. Commissioner Dackett. Thank you. Through the chair to the city manager, what does it look like if there's something in this that uh, as, a, as a commission we are not in favor of and we want to make a change to it? So picking something, I don't know. There's, we're getting rid of all the sidewalks or something. You know, um, What does that look like? If, if we, is this an up-down yes-no vote and the planning commission comes up with things or is this a, where we have some leeway to? I think as a commission, they can submit comments as well to the Planning Commission, absolutely. Exactly. Yes, yeah. what this does is just releases that plan. So based on the Michigan Planning Act, it has the steps to go through and the city commission at one point does have to release it uh, to the public and then all that time, the 63 day will be when we accept any comments, we have to go back in and possibly make some more edits based on that public comment, and then we also have to add the public comment from the survey that we've developed. Sure. Um, okay, let me rephrase that. I, I think what you're getting at is if it's something that, that the city commission as a whole wants to make a change to the plan, right. we could do a resolution and forward that on to the planning commission. Correct. Okay. Yes. yes. Sounds great. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner Clements? Yes, thank you. Uh, through the chair to Mr. Multane, a couple of the things mentioned uh, by the speaker during public comment, probably pretty easy fixes or updates like pictures and stuff like that. That can be just easily. Yes, we'll take a look at those pictures. Actually, we did uh, replace a lot of the pictures from the 2017 plan, so it's pointed in the right direction. We'll take a look at whatever ones that uh, were offensive. Okay, thanks. You know, and I, I do get what the speaker was saying about photos of a school that's not quote unquote in the city. So, you know, a lot of people they think, oh, you got a Bay City address, so you're in the city. Well, that's not the case, like John Glenn or Western or, you know, uh, Auburn Elementary School, even though it's a Bay City school, they're not in the city. So I think it is important uh, being that things that are within the city limits be highlighted. So thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Commissioner Ribbett? I guess I'm gonna have to review the statute. Um, so what you're saying is, is the commission could provide a resolution saying this is absolutely unacceptable and the planning commission can reject that resolution, correct? Sorry, through you, Madam Mayor, to the planning director. Yeah, if it was to come to that at the end of the 63-day period, yes, because the Planning Commission will be having a public hearing. Yeah, I, 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 that's clear. Um, you know, one of the parts about it that, you know, master plans, and, and I've, I've been in local government, township government for many years, but I'm seeing a significant number of things here that have nothing to do with the Planning Commission, right? community identity strategies and economic development and all those kinds of things. Um, I guess I'm trying to understand the statute requires all those pieces. I mean, community master plan and zoning and uh, planning and zoning, that, that part has always been the responsibility of the planning commission. But when we're talking about things like community identity strategies and economic development strategies, isn't that more a city commission function? Well, it is, and the description and actually the different strategies that are in each chapter, that is a result of the discussion that's within that chapter. It does involve other city departments, so it is something that does apply you know, to the city. I guess the responsibility of the planning commission and the planning office is just to get that word out and make the document, you know, a living document and a usable document. Um, but those are items that, again, we, we built upon the 2017 plan. So there were accomplishments that in the strategies that we were able to achieve, even sometimes maybe unknowingly. But when you look back 
at the five-year period and see what was accomplished, um, that's where some of those strategies were adjusted or the, the ones that were not satisfied or achieved, a lot of those just remained as a, as a strategy. Yeah, sorry, one, one last thing. I mean, I, I'm reading a couple of these things, right? Provide leadership. The city should play a leadership role with all groups engaged in the betterment and promotion of the city, maintain continued efforts. That, that's not the planning office's job. Next item was uh, promote unique community assets. That's not the planning department's job. So I guess I'm curious why the planning commission, who would have z zero authority or responsibility over these things, is making a decision on this. I mean, I, I, I understand it's, you know, I guess it's how we're setting this up, but um, uh, I'm, I'm just trying to understand um, how you're taking input from other departments and how this is being fully incorporated because th that's not your job at the planning department. Well, let me state that the Michigan Planning Enabling Act is a state legislation that municipalities follow. So our planning department follows that municipal or that planning act. And within the planning act, it, it sets up zoning. That's why it's called the zoning enabling legislation to give planning commission powers to do zoning and land use uh, regulation. And the responsibility for that document, which is the master plan, is within the responsibility or the role of the planning commission. And then the role that the master plan serves is to also, as a, uh, I won't say a supplement, but it's a guide for a new zoning ordinance, which is the next thing that will follow this. So the master plan helps set the discussion for possible zoning ordinance changes, which would be more regulatory. Uh, for example, on the issue of parking, if the master plan might talk about just general parking or parking on the streets in general, it could address that. But the actual rule or law that would incorporate such a, a law, that would be in the city code of ordinances but the Planning Commission does have the authority through that Planning Act to develop the master plan. They're responsible to do that. And then they're also uh, the same body that would promote it throughout the, the five-year period. And then, like I say, it's also used as a, a stepping stone or a basis for the regulatory component of planning, which is the, the zoning ordinance. Thank you. You all set? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Anyone else would like to speak with our expert? Seeing no one, you can go back to your seat, Mr. Maltain. Thank you for coming up. So we're all set for the roll call, right, Madam Deputy? Commissioner Rivet? Oh, okay. Commissioner Gerard? Yes. Nijvecki? Yes. Clements? Yes. Morris? Yes. Dockett? Yes. Rivet? No. Bernie? Yes. Brenner? Yes. Hilliker? No. Seven yes, two no? It's approved. The next item, please. Resolutions, item number nine. Commission as a whole resolution recommending contract number 23-5419 with the Michigan Department of Transportation regarding funding for the reconstruction of Lafayette Bridge at the estimated city's portion of $1,665,536. Is there a motion, Commissioner Gerard? Who to approve? Is there any uh, second? Commissioner Morris? Second. Thank you. Will you please call the roll? Oh, is there any discussion? I'm sorry. Commissioner Gerard? 
Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, <clears throat> just quickly, this is in this current year's budget. Correct, this is budgeted from, uh, where, where do those funds come from to support? This is gonna come out of the city's major streets budget for fiscal year 25 through 27. Okay. <clears throat> and then uh, this is the result, just, just to answer some of the questions for the uh, resident. We have to contribute this towards that bridge for, for what reason? It, there's a public act that states that we have to financially participate in a state truck line construction project. Okay, so what is that? Is like 18% of the, the, the project? I'm sorry. I'm this one, uh, the city is required to pay 8.75%. Okay, okay, not as. Oh, that's, that's yes. Okay, and um, so it's coming from major streets. Um, the unfortunate part is, is that the federal government's putting up a lion's share of this, this funding, 73 million, which is great from the uh, Infrastructure Act. And so it reduces the state's burden. Um, unfortunately, because of that same act though, we're still required to put up $1.7 million. Which I've said it multiple times, I'm a little frustrated that the state kind of gets a break and uh, the city still is contributing the same level. Um, it'd be nice if our state folks would uh, recognize that somehow, or I don't know if it's federal, is, is that federally mandated that we have to, or is that a state matter? So state, state jurisdiction on that, that we have to contribute that. So the state action would have to figure out how to get rid of that. All right, well, I, I'm gonna support it because we need the bridge and we know, it's, we know the condition that it's in, yeah. uh, but it's, I'd still like to see that money go on our local streets versus that bridge, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Now will you please call the roll? Commissioner Nijvecki. Yes. Clements? Yes. Morris? Yes. Dockett? Yes. Rivet? Yes. Bernie? Yes. Brenner? Yes. Hilliker? Yes. Gerard? Yes. Nine yes. The motion is approved. The next item, please. Resolutions item 13, Commissioner Clements resolution changing the April 1st, 2024 city commission meeting to April 2nd, 2024. Is there a motion, Commissioner Clements? Move to approve. Is there any discussion, Commissioner Nijvitsky? Any discussion? I, no, sorry, Madam. There was just no uh, explanation in the uh, thing. In the, so I was just wondering why we're moving it, that's all. Commissioner Clements. Sure. Um, a couple weeks ago, somebody asked me about, you know, why are we meeting on the, the Monday after Easter? And I was, I don't know. And they're like, well, that's Easter Monday. There's still schools closed on that day. And I asked the officers and Dana if there was any thought or appetite. And they said, no, just we'd have to put, put a resolution. So here's the resolution. If it goes, it goes. If it doesn't, it doesn't. That's really all there was to it. Commissioner Bernie? I was thinking the same thing, but um, the thing is, is that um, it seems like this group click that you guys have, you cannot, um, when you decide that you guys want to have something, a day off, or when you decide to get together and say, okay, we're going to just have this time off and is it okay, um, you excuse each other. When it's somebody else that you don't like, you don't want to excuse them. You, you, you don't excuse them. It's this little, this has got to stop. You know, there's, they're, they're, you know, if I'm trying to have my way, I'm, I'm going to clear this out. I'm, 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 I'm running for mayor and I'm going to thin it out. That's what I'm here for. This click has got to stop. We're here for the people, not for each other. There ain't no, you know, clean the, clean the swamp, whatever the man says, it's drain it. It's time. This is this has got to stop. We're here for the people, not for each other. You all set, Commissioner? Commissioner Rivet? Sorry, I, no real. I'm, I'll, it doesn't really matter that much, except um, it's not a state or federal holiday. Um, so um, I guess I'm just a little concerned about um, recognizing Christian holidays versus other holidays in our effort to be um, 
I'm not sure what t tolerant was that the resolution we passed or uh, diverse and equitable and inclusive. Um, it, you know, I just just want us to think about that. Like I said, I, I don't have a significant objection to it, but um, separation of church and state. Uh, we've had uh, some. We've had a public speaker come in and talk about, or one of our citizens say, you know, is are we effectively maintaining that separation? And this may be something to think about. Thanks. Thank you. Anyone else, Commissioner Gerard? Just real briefly, I'm going to be traveling during that time, so I, I, I won't be at that meeting. So. All right, thank you. Commissioner Dackett? Thank you. Do staff have the day off that day? Pardon? No, we do not. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Will the clerk please call the roll and the motion to approve? Commissioner Clements? Yes. Morris? No. Docket? No. I'm sorry, I didn't get. I'm sorry, no. Thank you. Rivet? Uh, no. Bernie? No. Brunner? No. Hilliker? No. Gerard? No. Nijbecki? Yes. There's seven no and two yes. The motion fails. Is there anything else tonight, Madam Clerk? No, there's not. Um, since this concludes our meeting, we are all excused.